many, many instruments use chord symbols, and there will obviously be many times where you will have to use them in your music. Sibelius makes it very straightforward, obviously, to input chord symbols, but there are a large number of options that you want to be aware of. So let's have a look at some of them from here. At the moment you can see I've got an acoustic guitar part and a saxophone part, so I'm going to show you using the saxophone part. Click on the first note here, and to the shortcut that you want to learn for chord symbols is Control k So with that note selected, Control k a flashing cursor appears, and with that I can then just type the chord name that I want. So for example, I want a C7. So I type C and 7, and when I press the space bar to move on to the next note, it becomes a chord symbol. Can space bar again to move on to the next note, and I can type another one. Um, let's say F906. Space bar to move on, and it looks exactly as you would expect it to look. Even the odds of um, diagrams that sometimes you, you would expect to see. So for example, if I do a D diminished, well, it looks like so. If I do a C with a sus4, that looks like so. So it's exactly as you would expect Sibelius to look like. This is all fine. That's exactly what you'd expect to happen. However, one surprising thing. I'm going to shift or drag to select all of these. And I'm going to alt click to copy them down onto the acoustic guitar part. And watch what happens. The same chords appear in the same place, but they've given guitar frames. Because Sibelius recognises that acoustic guitars understand guitar frames. Saxophone players don't use guitar frames, obviously. It's a nice wee feature in Sibelius. Another nice wee touch about the way Sibelius deals with the chord symbols is that the saxophone is a transposing instrument. So the saxophone player wouldn't want to see a C7 when soon you go to the parts, that's automatically transposed for him and it shows him the chords that he would have to think about to sound like that. That's a nice wee, another nice wee touch in Sibelius as well. There are other ways of inputting chords. Let's say for example you know what the notes are in the chord but you don't really know what the name of the chord is. Well, if you have a MIDI keyboard attached you can go Control K and that will get you into chord input mode. You can then just play the notes on your MIDI keyboard and Sibelius will work out the chords for you. So for example, if I play this chord here, it recognises that that was a D major over a C bass. If I do another one, a slightly less um, obvious one, next one, uh, let's do... There you go, an E7 without a fifth over a C sharp. So it analyzes the chords for you and it means that you're never really stuck to know what the chord is that you're trying to put in. Now, chord symbols are basically text markers. So to access them from the ribbon, you go to the text tab and you can see there's the chord symbols group here. There are a lot of options in there and we're going to look at some of them here. The chord symbols basically takes you into the chord symbol mode. It's the same as is typing Control K, so we don't have to look at that. If I select this bar here, I can do the add from notes. So I know what notes I've put in there, but I don't know what the chord symbol is. And I don't have a keyboard attached, let's imagine. So I can now click on there. It runs a plugin. I'm just going to say OK to that. I'm not going to change any of the options. And it tells me the chord above there. Nice retouch. With any of these chords selected, let's say this one here, I'm going to zoom in so you can see what happens here. I can look at some of these other options here. This one here is a handy one because I might decide that that is too complicated a way to play C7, in which case I can scroll through and maybe try that one. That's still a C7, but it's played using a different way on the guitar. And there are various different options, and I'm just scrolling through there to get to all the different ways of playing that chord till I get one that I like. I'm going to stick with that. And I can do that for any of the chords. It respells different ways to play the chord. This one here gives you different versions of the text. So you play the same chord, but there are different texts that you can use that will still work for that chord. 
Some of them get a wee bit complicated just to be the same as F minor 6. This one here, if I again if I select chord symbol, this one here I can add or remove the chord text, the text root or the diagram. So the chord text, forgive me that, bring it back. The root, in this case, would be the C. And the diagram turns the diagram on and off as well. Let's try this one here. This option here lets you edit the diagram. So there's a diagram there. I can now use various options. The instructions are all up here on how to redraw this diagram. So if I decide I want to use this chord, but I want it drawn slightly differently and I can't find an option that Sibelius has, well, I can draw it myself. All I have to do is I can shift click to change the symbols that are being used. Up at the top, I can decide that that's going to be an open string or a non played string. And I can click on the chords, on the strings, on the various frets to change them. So I can make my chord symbol look exactly as I want it. This option here gives me an option to create my own chord symbol from scratch. I click on new, I get the same sort of dialog box again, but I then work my way through and I create my own chord symbol and down here I name the chord and the type of chord that it is. I'm not going to do that just now, obviously. And the last box here, the last option here is this dialog launcher, which gives you every option you could possibly hope for for your chords. It shows you what notes to play, to play that chord there. It shows you on a piano. It gives you the option there to change your preferred diagram. You can change the input name. Lots of options from there. So you can see that inputting chords is very straightforward in the simplest way. Control K, type the chord name. Dead straightforward. But you do have a large number of options to add any type of chord in a large number of methods.